Francesca wants to know my view on sex work and advanced soul work. It's a deeply controversial question, and I know that my response is going to upset and alienate people on either end of the ethical bridge, but we need to address this question because I have spent weeks reflecting upon this theme, weeks reviewing the literature and also my direct experiences helping women heal from the psychological, emotional and physical trauma and existential dread from their time spent in prostitution. And yet, I can't give a definitive answer either way. Even though my experience and my conviction would suggest a leaning towards not going down the prostitute pathway, I can still recognize that there is a potential higher expression where prostitution becomes a sacred prostitution for loving union and intimate sexual exchange in a conscious, intimate and intentional setting. But best case scenarios are not common scenarios. Escorting, stripping, camgirling or any other form of physical or digital prostitution are nowhere near the same as the supposed sacred prostitutes of the ancient world who would live in the temples and revel the travelers on their sacred sexual pilgrimages. But I also have an issue with this history to begin with. They're often overtly romanticized. We're going to go into all of this in this video because my number one intention is not to condemn or praise, but always explore that middle ground in between and hopefully give you the resources to be able to make the decision for yourself. And if you're healing from the trauma of having mistakenly or maybe against your will non-consensually entered into some of these dynamics, hopefully this will be a place where we can heal together. Let's return back to the question from Francesca, which I really like because it's actually not what I agree with. So we can have an adult discussion and disagreement. Francesca asked again, bring it up on the screen. What is your view on sex work and advanced soul work? I live in a country where it is legal, yet society tells me it's the actions of a damaged soul. I love my work and have spent 20 years plus in continuous deep soul work to ensure my soul's journey is peaceful. I live in blissful contentment now in my 40s and believe the patriarchy may have it wrong about my wonderful world. Francesca, thank you for the question, and I hope that my video response, although I may disagree with some elements of the question itself, does not come across as a punishing attack towards you as an individual. You might be the very, very rare exception of a woman who can spend multiple years in this line of service or work and not have a spiritual consequence. But I don't think it's something that I can recommend. The reason that I can't recommend it, and the reason that I don't think that legality equals health, is because many things are legal, and many things are encouraged or normalized, but it doesn't mean that they translate to soul health. Let's briefly look at the literature. So I held up this one stack, and I'm going to put a pinned comment in the video to bring you the best recommendation. Sorry, I just hit the microphone there. There's one stack of 10 books representing the trauma literature, representing the sacred sexuality literature, and guess what? We didn't do just 10 books. I've actually got 20 books selected from my shelf. You may or may not be able to see them right there. Either way, I'm going to put the best selection down in the comments section because this is a complicated question. Where do we dive in? Where do we begin? Let's bring out a quote from Sacred Sexuality, because if we are going to talk about the spiritual consequences and the advanced soul work perspective, we could probably do with a definition of what sacred sexuality actually is, and then see, or at least um, markate the line between the ideal and the common practice. So let's let George Feuerstein help us out today. I think he's got at least 30 years of practice. In this field, he is a renowned scholar on the erotic, esoteric, yogic um, traditions. So I trust his word from the preface of the book with this wonderful illustration by the side. What does 
George have to say about sacred sexuality? Sacred sexuality is about love. Not merely the positive feeling between intimates, but an overwhelming reverence for all embodied life on whatever level of existence. Through sacred sexuality, we directly participate in the vastness of being, the mountains, rivers, and animals of the earth, the planets and the stars, and our next door neighbors. A little bit longer on the quote. Sacred sexuality is about recovering our authentic being, which knows bliss beyond mere pleasurable sensations. Sacred sexuality is about the reenchantment of our lives. It is about embracing the imponderable mystery of existence, about the curious fact that you and I and eight billion others cannot account for our existence and our sexuality. I actually said five billion, but I've updated it because it's 2022. And then we go on, and it talks more in this vein. The point is clear. Sacred sexuality is about love, enchantment, mystery, reverence, and the soulful connection between two human beings, or one human to a group, or the whole intermixing between our different essences. Does this sound like camgirling on OnlyFans? Does this sound like stripping in a bar for men who are drunk and throwing away the money while cheating on their wives? Does this sound like walking the streets or even having a high-class escort profile and showing up to the businessman for three hours of casual fun on the Vegas trip? I don't think so. The challenge that we need to address is the best-case scenarios are not common scenarios. Francesca might be the exception in having 20 years of experience in this space, where maybe she had the experience of genuinely touching the lives of the men or women that she has as her clients, and she uses her sexuality to give some kind of healing experience. But I don't think it's something that we should suggest to our young girls and impressionable women as a way of fulfilling their purpose on this earth. Let's go into the sacred sexuality myth of choice, which is the archetype of the sacred prostitute. From a Jungian perspective or an archetypal perspective, the sacred prostitute is the healing woman who has access to that dark feminine energy and uses this to create some kind of truly soul awakening experience in the men that she sleeps with. In one form or another, this is something like consensual kink, in the whole spectrum, I mean, this is a book on BDSM, but we also have all the different tantric Taoist perspectives, and of course, sexuality is such a massive topic. The point is, it's a woman who consciously, intentionally uses her sexual energy to create relating experiences which uplift her and her sexual partners. That's the ideal, at the very least. What's the historical example that's often uh, brought through? Well, it's the ancient temples, and on page 68, not page 69, we have a wonderful quote that actually demystifies a very overtly romanticized, sometimes fictionalized element of ancient history. Quote about ancient Greece. Prostitution and religion were close allies in ancient Greece. For instance, the harlots of Corinth who numbered over 1,000 were owned by the sanctuary of Aphrodite the radiant goddess of love and sexual passion. Ooh, how exciting. Mention the word Aphrodite and you've definitely got your archetypal convictions to float you off to spiritual bypassing land, but just wait one moment. They were regarded as sacred slaves. However, their services were probably rather prosaic without any ritualistic component. Their status was low, and their choice of trade was prompted more by economic necessity than by religious vocation. Final line. Their clients paid the temple officials, who thus effectively functioned as pimps. It doesn't sound like the highest advanced level of soul work for a woman 2,500 years ago, especially not today in the 21st century, 
We only need to turn to some of the feminist literature, like the classic Susan Griffin, Pornography and Silence, or some of the modern, um, yeah, Your Brain on Porn, or The Porn Trap, to look at the nature of what's happening in the digital prostitution space, and that overt objectifying, which collapses the depth. And I mean the real depth is completely squished and condensed into two-dimensional representations, and I do not believe that it is possible for a woman to engage in that space for any considerable amount of time without creating an internalized image of herself, which is also flat. It doesn't mean that I think we should go all the way to the extreme. I don't think that every woman who posts a sexy picture of herself on the internet, excuse me, I don't think that every woman who posts a sexy picture of herself on the internet is necessarily prostituting herself. But we can't pick and choose a story from the past, an archetype of the sacred prostitute, and think that we are somehow the archetypal role itself. This is the number one spiritual bypass trap that I see in all of the archetypal theory, which is to mistake the role or the potential role for the character. If I'm tapped into my kingly energy from a Jungian perspective, I may temporarily wear the crown, but I'm not the king in front of you. The woman who taps into the goddess energy, she is not a goddess. She is not Aphrodite. She may draw inspiration in a certain appropriate moment, but you're still just a woman. Yes, you're incredibly sacred and beautiful. Yes, the man who taps into his kingly energy is incredibly powerful and life affirmative to his community, but he's still just a man. We need to look back to the myths of the king and the queen in their truest form and realize that the ancient cultures had a deep awareness that the man is not the archetype. He represents the role, and it's only at the lower levels of consciousness that we mistake the archetype for the person. I'll bring this all back together to make it relevant for the question. Is it the patriarchal society which is creating a false narrative which is holding women back from expressing their sexuality at the higher levels of freedom and connection and liberation that we enjoy in the 21st century? I don't think so. My work with women one-to-one -one who have been in sex workspaces and have been in session with me week after week to heal from the shame, the angst, and the self-disgust which lives inside of them as a result of sexualized trauma, which is often rooted in very horrific experiences in childhood, would suggest that for 99.999% of women, prostitution is not advanced soul work, but it is merely a confusion of something that feels like a liberation when it's actually a containment. Let's unpack that. What typically happens as a woman comes out of that repressive mode of having to hide her sexuality, having been shamed perhaps by a father or a brother, is that there is a very natural pendulum swing towards exhibitionism. There's a very natural swing towards gaining power via expressing yourself. And this for most women will mean something like realizing that their body is beautiful and dressing in a way that suits their character. And they can be out in the world where they can enjoy the fact that they are pretty, powerful, and all these different things. Some women will take it further. It becomes the Instagram game where you're wearing lingerie, or you're posing in seductive manners, and you feed off the likes and the comments, and then women may take it even further and realize that they can make some money from this because they're already doing it anyway. It's a gradual, incremental, step-by-step -step process in most cases, unless there is a fit, like a horrific human trafficking element, which sadly can also be the case. The fundamental point is that I'm not trying to shame anyone, but there is an underlying psychological dynamic that I see time and time again, where the repression or abuse of childhood takes on a shadow swing towards overt exhibitionism, or at its very worst, a dark, immature, feminine, vampiric, controlling, or succubus-style energetic withdrawal which doesn't serve the woman's soul at the higher level. She has a creative source inside of her. She has the ability to create something which could be beautiful. She can literally bring life into the world and become a mother, or maybe she's already a mother. Her sexuality 
need not be devalued by giving it to everyone on the internet. And in my personal conviction, I don't think it even works when you do the high class escort path either. Very few women can spend years in that role without hardening their heart, without f gradually accumulating trauma in their womb, without taking on the emotional energetic baggage of the clients that come to them for more than just sex. I understand more than just sex. But if you want to take the spiritual perspective, and I don't necessarily buy into this all the way, there is one idea of soul tires and etheric tires and the cords which connect us. <coughs> Excuse me, it's winter. And the cords which connect us, which naturally gather and condense. And if you have sex with a hundred different men over the course of a few years, just imagine how many tentacles you've got connected to your heart. I find that pretty terrifying. I find that not only terrifying, I find that degrading and scary. I wouldn't want my daughter having that experience. I wouldn't want my female friends having that experience. And if we were to take this principle and apply it across society, does it make more sense for every woman to have a hundred energetic cords attached to her heart? Or should she have a lower number with intentional choice? I'm not going to say what that number is. It's the same for men. Men can also fall into the trap of thinking that just because they have the phallic consciousness that they can go and sexually maraud out in the world, and especially when they get a bit of status and a bit of success, like there's no spiritual consequence. But you do objectify yourself. You may think that you're the prize. You may think that this is the reward of becoming a high status man. But if you engage with people at the shallow, superficial, sexual level, you also become that when you're engaging with them. You miss out on the creative depths of your soul. You miss out on the possibility of a truly intimate, loving, consensual dynamic with someone who you truly care about. And you can also explore all of the kinky, wonderful, transformative experiences in that conscious container. One second. Hey -o. Oh, come around. And we're back. Uh, Terry the postman just decided to deliver a package and don't know where we were. We will keep it raw, we will keep it directional. Don't devalue yourself. I think there is a whole world of complexity and again I've pinned a comment down in the description or in the comment section which truly hopefully gives you the resources to decide for yourself. But I want you to decide for yourself as I seem to invite in every single video on this channel. It might be possible to do advanced soul work while being in the prostitute dynamic, but we also need to understand that at a deeper level of energetics, prostitution need not be sexual. Prostitution is any situation where you are selling yourself short for money. It's where you're sleeping on your creative gifts. It's where you're repressing your potential for the sake of an easy, comfortable, or otherwise very consciously self-diminishing, self-betraying situation. Most people prostitute themselves in their workplaces, in large or small degrees, or the otherwise span of multiple years spent living below what they could be. For example, I get many wonderful, well-meaning comments on this page about me doing meditation videos, or ASMR videos, or even bedtime stories. And I get where it's coming from, I appreciate the compliment, but when I read these comments, for me it activates the energy of the prostitute, because if I were to take this channel in the direction of doing meditative ASMR videos, I know that I would be selling short my actual gift that I can give you, which is far more academically and clinically and professionally oriented towards the information which I want you to apply in your own life and reflect upon to come to your own conclusions. To go into the meditative hypnotic ASMR space, that becomes too much of a power imbalance that I don't want to play with. That becomes something like a prostitute dynamic for myself, because I know that not every woman or gay man or straight man or whoever who watches those videos will necessarily have a sexualizing dynamic. 
there will be some people who will watch those videos for a sense of sexualized safety. And I refuse to play into that because that's not what I want to create in my energetic space. That's where the archetype can go when you really strip it back. It's not just sex. It's not just giving yourself up for money physically or digitally. It's every moment where you energetically prostitute yourself and the impact that that has on a soul level, I cannot be the judge. But my conviction is that if we were to apply this across society, and if everyone, 50%, let's say, 50% less prostitution, and 50% more solidity, autonomy, and intentional expression of their energy into the world, and discerning receptivity to their energetic partners, friends, business colleagues, romantic relationships, who they let into their heart, I think the world would be a better place. There's a reason that we shame and guilt the prostitute today. It's not just the sex work element, and I don't think legality means health. There is an exception, but the exception is one in a hundred thousand. And I can't make a video to that one in a hundred thousand because somebody who wants to naturally go down that path because they lack the information or maybe they haven't read the resources which would guide them elsewhere, will take that little sliver of possibility and then go down a path which potentially will lead them to some quite difficult reflections in about five years' time about what's happened to their womb space and what's happened in terms of the congealment around their heart and the fact that they're no longer as loving as they used to be. I don't want that for the women of the world, and I can't stand here and say anything less than that with conviction. But... You're the one to make your own decisions. Comment down below, whatever you may think, and ultimately I want this to be a discussion, not an argument, and maybe there's already some pretty charged comments in the comment section, but let's be respectful. Ultimately, it's your choice. My conviction, having worked with people and having spent years reading this kind of literature from all kinds of angles, is that prostitution at every level is something which we should avoid. You get to be the decider of when you're prostituting yourself, and if you're a man or woman watching this video and you know right now that you are prostituting yourself for money in a way that doesn't feel good, it's something that feels necessary. It's something which is just accepted. You can still move beyond it. It might take three or six months to make a plan to move beyond it, but don't give up hope and don't let yourself be chained into a dynamic which keeps your soul small. I don't believe the spiritual coping mechanisms, but actually the next video in the series is exactly on coping mechanisms, so I'll save it for that one, and I'll see you over there.